Hello and welcome to the next tutorial about prepomics. Uh, this time I will show you how to perform a thermal mechan mechanical analysis of a thick pipe. So let's create a new model first. Uh, this will be plain strain analysis uh, and with the default unit system. And now I will import the geometry and the geometry will be uh, really simple. Uh, this is just a quarter of the uh, pipe's cross section. Mm, it was prepared in FreeCAD as always. So you can see that I just created a sketch. Uh, and then uh, I applied the uh, part make face from wires tool uh, to create this uh, surface and then I exported it to, uh, to be able to use it in uh, prepomics. Uh, so uh, let's uh, define the machine parameters. Uh, I will use the uh, maximum element size of 0 0.6 millimeters and I will create the mesh now. Uh, now I will uh, define the, the uh, settings of, of the analysis. Uh, so let's define the material first. Uh, this will be steel, uh, so I will specify the name uh, for this material and now uh, I can define the properties. Uh, first let's start from, from elasticity. Uh, this will be standard uh, Young's modulus for steel. I can also use the uh, conversion utility in, in Prepomex uh, and specify the, the value in, in uh, different units and th those will be converted to the default units in the current unit system. Uh, I showed you this before uh, and now let's uh, define um, also uh, thermal conductivity because this will be a thermal mechanical analysis so we need both uh, thermal and mechanical properties. Uh, thermal part will be part will be a steady state so we don't need a specific heat and density, uh, thermal conductivity will be sufficient. Uh, so let's uh, define this and one more thing that we need for this uh, coupled analysis is uh, thermal expansion. Uh, we haven't used this before mm, and now I have to specify the thermal expansion coefficient and this will be mm, the value uh, right here and also zero temperature that's uh, the reference temperature uh, for which uh, there's no um, thermal uh, strain. Uh, so mm, let's confirm the, the properties defined here uh, and now I can also define, I will hide the mesh and now I can also define a section and uh, this will be of, of course the, the default material is selected here mm, and I can also specify uh, the thickness uh, which is not, not so important here, but let's define this for it to be uh, 300 millimeters and I will apply it to the um, geometry uh, and now uh, I can define the uh, analysis step and, and other settings. So let's define the step. Uh, this time we'll use um, this uh, type of step. This is coupled temperature displacement analysis. Uh, so uh, theoretically we will have uh, coupling in both ways. So uh, a temperature will affect displacement and displacement will affect temperature. But in, uh, in this simple case uh, we will only need one way coupling. So uh, only temperature affecting displacement. Uh, we could use uncoupled analysis as well, uh, but in in this case it actually doesn't matter, let's choose the, the coupled uh, one and, and the results will be mm, the same as they would be with uncoupled approach or, or sequential approach. Uh, so I will leave the steady state setting on uh, and let's confirm this. Uh, now uh, do not forget, let's define initial conditions. Uh, I have to specify the uh, initial temperature. This is not for uh, transit analysis but I also have to uh, define the, the initial temperature to, to get correct results uh, even though this is a steady state analysis. Uh, so let's mm, specify the initial temperature. This is the same as the reference temperature defined for the material uh, for thermal expansion and let's confirm this. And now I can proceed to step settings. Uh, I will need just a few boundary conditions. You can see that we utilize symmetry here. So uh, let's uh, define symmetry boundary conditions. Uh, I will specify uh, it for, for this uh, edge and now uh, for uh, this edge here. Uh, and uh, now I just need, uh, because I defined the mechanical boundary conditions and uh, since the analysis is coupled I also need thermal boundary conditions or loads, so in this case we're applying a temperature boundary condition. Uh, this uh, edge here will have the uh, temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, and uh, this one here uh, will have a temperature of uh, 20 degrees uh, Celsius uh, and I can confirm this. And now uh, the model is, is fully defined uh, and uh, I can also show you the uh, sheet with, with the data and calculations, analytical solution, we will go back to this later on. Uh, but you can see that the properties uh, are also here. This is the um, inner radius and outer radius of the pipe and those are the temperatures that we defined. So let's go back to Prepomex and uh, I will submit this analysis now. It won't take long to, to solve this because of we use the uh, not only uh, plain strain assumption but also uh, symmetry. The results are already available so let's check them. And now uh, to, to compare it with analytical solution, uh, I'm in interested in, in different uh, components of the stress, the answer. 
Uh, for Mrs. Stress, I could also use for Mrs. Stress, but uh, in this case, I will be mainly interested in uh, individual components of the stress. And I will show you how to post process this. Uh, we also use Paraview, and for the first time in these tutorials, uh, to do some uh, more advanced uh, post processing. So uh, let's start comparing with analytical uh, values that we obtained in the uh, sheet. Mm, let's. Uh, I will show you first uh, how this all works here. Uh, here I can specify the radius, uh, and for this radius I will get the, all the uh, stresses here. Uh, so this is the uh, inner radius. I could also change this to outer radius, uh, or uh, the value uh, in the middle, and uh, I will get uh, r the right values of the stress. I also have a plot uh, of this, mm, here's the, the source of the formulas. I also have a plot uh, showing all these stress components. Uh, in blue one is radial stress, uh, red one is tangential, st tangential stress, and uh, the, the green one is uh, actual stress. So I can check the, all the individual components here. And we could uh, compare the values with those obtained uh, in Prepomex. I could, for example, enable actual stress. You can see mm, that the values, you can already see that the values uh, agree. If you look at, uh, at the, the values reported here or, or at, at here at in this plot, you can already see mm, that uh, there's a very good agreement with um, the uh, analytical solution. Uh, but I'll also show you this in uh, Paraview. Uh, so here I could check the actual stresses uh, and I could also uh, show you uh, radio and tangential stress. Uh, I could enable stress components, but you could see that we will get mm, the values on the right values uh, that we are interested in. in for example, uh, when we want to check the radial stress, you can see mm, how it varies from uh, zero here to uh, around minus 10 here and again zero. And if you want to check this value, we will see mm, that it's not so easy because the, the, the contour plot that we see here uh, shows you mm, the values only uh, in certain regions not uh, the whole plot but only uh, the edges here uh, show you the uh, values that you want to that you want to evaluate uh, so the the plots uh, of the mm, contour plots of, of the um, stress components in cartesian coordinate system could be used uh, and we could check the mm, values at the edges uh, aligned with global coordinate system uh, but we can also use paraview to, to convert the, the stresses from cartesian to to cylindrical coordinates and then we have plots that show you the the right uh, components uh, not just uh, here when where the edges align with global coordinate system uh, so let's uh, go to mm, paraview but first i will tell you how i uh, prepared the results to, for processing in paraview uh, so first of all mm, you need uh, the F frd file this is the calculus result file find this file and uh, convert it to mm, paraview format because paraview doesn't support calculus results files directly and for this conversion, there are uh, some uh, scripts, uh, there are some mm, codes that you can find uh, online. Uh, but it's also possible to do is to do, to do this using uh, FreeCAD. Uh, you can just uh, import the FRD file. That's the one here. Uh, I already have this imported. You will see this as results because uh, FreeCAD also has uh, the module for finite element analysis. And then you can go to export and uh, you can select the uh, format used by uh, Paraview. And then you will get the, the file that can be in, uh, displayed in Paraview. So let's go to Paraview. Mm, here you can see the, this uh, software. Uh, of course, it's, it's open source. Mm, and uh, now uh, we, I already generated the uh, contour plots for, for, this, for all these components. Uh, and I will show you formulas that were necessary for this transformation. Uh, so first of all, I uh, imported the results file uh, created previously in FreeCAD. And then I used the calculator filter, mm, the one here, to uh, obtain this, uh, those uh, plots here. Uh, so this is the, the first calculator object. I changed the name to the radial to make it clear that it's uh, the uh, radial uh, stress. And now I'll expand this to show you the whole formula. Here's the formula that I used. Uh, I used uh, coordinates uh, defined here mm, and uh, stresses, uh, stress components defined here. Uh, so we can see how this formula looks like. And uh, here's I also had to uh, convert this from uh, Pascal's to megapascals because uh, when I was because FreeCAD basically uh, now operates on Pascal's and and uh, I had to do this additional conversion, but it's, it's not a problem. Uh, so mm, this is the formula for radial stress. 
uh, here you can see the formula for the tang tangential stress it differs only slightly and for the exo stress it's just uh, z component divided by by this value to, to convert to uh, megapascals so mm, this is pretty simple and if you want to see this those formulas in in uh, um, more uh, clear form you can see them here those are the uh, transformation formulas uh, you can use them to convert the st stresses from the cylindrical uh, from uh, cartesian uh, s coordinate system to cylindrical system for the radial tangential and, and uh, actual stress this is straightforward here uh, so those are the, the the formulas they use for the conver conversion mm, and now uh, let's go back to the paraview and i will show you the uh, results uh, so mm, here I have the plot of the radial stress. Now you can see that it's displayed on the whole uh, plot, not just here at the edges. Uh, here I have the values, but uh, I don't have to. I could actually mm, check them this way. I could use the hover plots on uh, points on uh, option, and this will show me the. Mm, you can see I can't uh, show this uh, because this will disappear. But the last uh, object in this um, in this list is result, and this is the uh, radial stress that we are interested in. So. Uh, if we check this you can see that it's pretty much zero uh, here and here and in the, in the middle it's around uh, minus 10 and this is what we expected uh, if we uh, go uh, to this plot or uh, here uh, if i change this to um, ferry you can we will see that this is the, the value that we expect we are really close uh, to the uh, analytical solution so um, the agreement is is very good Mm, and I could check it this way, but uh, it's, it's not really convenient. And there's also another option. Uh, I can use, uh, apart from from the calculator filter, I can also use the plot over line filter. And this one uh, will uh, create a path. Uh, and then we, when I confirm this, uh, it will uh, create uh, plots of all these values. I can just uh, go to here and uh, disable all the other results and just enable the uh, stress that I want to visualize and now you will see how it changes from zero to uh, to again to zero but here it goes to the uh, around minus 11 uh, the value that we expected so uh, the results are for, for the um, radio stress are, are visible here uh, and now let's also check uh, this is uh, this agrees really well with this uh, part of the plot and now check the other now let's check the, the other uh, stresses uh, this is tang tangential i have to uh, just rescale the, the legend uh, and now again i will uh, define uh, the uh, plot over line a filter i will apply this and uh, disable uh, unnecessary uh, data and I will just select the, uh, the results part. This is what I want to get. And here I can also prop the, the values. I can check them, mm, compare them with the, mm, uh, just to, to, to remind you, we're looking at the tangential stress. Uh, so I can go to uh, look at the red uh, plot here and compare this with uh, what we get here and also uh, here. And you can see that uh, it's really uh, similar to uh, what we obtained in uh, in the analysis. I could also, of course, use the, mm, this part of the sheet and calculate uh, the values, but um, it's, it's not necessary since since I can mm, I can just uh, do this using the mm, the paraview uh, and uh, this comparing with this plot uh, shown here. Uh, so mm, those are the mm, the results for the tangential stress and I will uh, hide this and now I'll proceed to the last uh, component. I also have to again rescale uh, and this is the actual stress and again I will define the uh, plot over line filter. I will apply this and uh, disable unnecessary uh, objects and now I will uh, scroll down to uh, results uh, and here you can compare again with the plot here you can see uh, how it varies uh, here mm, so it's really close uh, and uh, here uh, it should be mm, somewhere uh, we are looking we are looking at the green line uh, this is somewhere here uh, so mm, let's uh, again uh, compare this with paraview uh, and you can see that we are really close to uh, what we mm, expect here uh, looking at the uh, analytical solution uh, so again, mm, we can c compare all these results and uh, check them in Paraview uh, using this nice uh, path option and uh, then we will get uh, the right uh, plots and uh, you can see that the agreement is, agreement is really very good in this case. Uh, 
Uh, so that's it for this Purple Max tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. As always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics of future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.